Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Roam Over Landing. Today I'm actually going to be covering some exciting changes that I've been working on on the vehicle. It's been a lot of effort, good couple weeks and um, basically in the previous episode I explained to you the changes I've made to the turbo, to the tires, to the rear seats and the storage system in the back there. Now this week we're going to be looking at the changes that I've been working on in the canopy itself. We're looking at a new draw system, we're looking at a new battery system and I've got a new air compressor in the vehicle and we've tweaked quite a bit. It's very exciting and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So let's start with the battery system. This has been the bulk of the work that's kind of gone into everything. We are now running the Red Arc Red Vision system with the Manager 30. We've got some custom outlets. We've got the whole Red Vision system wired up and everything. Water tank levels. We've got all our switching for our lights and stuff like that. I can show you here. Pop there. We've got the lights on and off. We've got our 12 volts on and off. We've got USBs and all sorts of things here. High output USB cigarette lighter, some more USB slots. We got the water pump hooked up there. I can power the water pump from the Red Vision system and everything. And yeah, it's really, really cool. I've been playing around with it for the past couple of weeks and I'm very, very impressed so far. Basically what we've got here is we've got the Red Vision system, which is the TVMS, Total Vehicle Management System. This thing manages the auxiliary battery, the charger, up to you know 530 amp loads, 510 amp loads, you've got your R bus connectors for communicating with the manager 30 and the monitor and the bus bar. You've got digital inputs and control so you can control you know switching and stuff like that from reverse lights or pressure sensors or light sensors or whatever. You've got your six water tank sensors, you've got two temperature sensors and an inverter remote control. So it's a lot. The Red Vision system really packs a lot of power. The TVMS feeds into the little Red Vision display here and this gives us a look at our water tank levels, our battery levels, the input and output of battery of you know power consumption which so I can see the amount of amperage coming from the battery system, I can see what's coming from my solar system, I can see what's coming from AC power, I can see what's going out when I switch on my lights, I can see that it uses like one amp, if I switch on the fridge I can see it uses like five amps. So you can see your power consumption and it can actually estimate how long your system can run at that current power consumption. How long will it take to charge at that current charge rate? You can really monitor are you positive or negative on your system if you're charging via solar. Is the battery draining or are you actually putting power back into your battery? Another one of the advantages of the Red Vision system is that basically anything you do on this Red Vision and you, any of the information you see on there, you actually can see on your phone as well. So like now, for example, I run my phone with the Red Vision app in the front of the vehicle. You can also do all of your switching from the phone. So that means I can leave all my, my camp lights on if I set up a dummy light or something that's far away from the camp to draw the bugs away. I can climb up in my rooftop tent and then I can switch everything off from my phone in the rooftop tent. I can manage the fridge, I can make sure that that's on, I actually have the fridge locked on. So you can't switch it on and off by mistake. And I've put in a new uh, lithium battery. So that's a 120 amp hour lithium battery now. So that just works wonderfully with this setup. So with charging and all that stuff, we've got the Manager 30 is in control of that. So basically what the Manager 30 does is it is a 30 amp DC charger, it's got an MPPT, and you can also charge via AC. So I've added an AC caravan outlet here that I can plug in at a campsite and I can charge up my battery system at 30 amps. You can charge your solar system at 30 amps. You can charge from the vehicle battery at 30 amps, so hence Manager 30. So yes, it's big, and if you compare it to other types of DC chargers, it's quite a lot bigger, but this is actually three units in one. And it's very, very impressive. So we've got our solar outlet here. So that sits here when I need to plug in. One of the other things we've got is we've actually got the Red Arc 160 watt solar blanket. So I'll show you that now. Um, but basically that will plug in here and we've got an amazing setup. So, you know, it's been a, a fun installation. I got to work on it with my dad. He was an aeronautical technician for like 26 years. So 
he knows his stuff when it comes to the wiring and stuff. So he helped me with a lot of the stuff. He helped me with cutting the board. I then went to Bush Tech. They helped me with carpeting the board. It was a really fun project to work on. And I must say, the Redox stuff, it seemed daunting in the beginning, but the way it's designed and the way it's actually put together is very, very simple. It's amazing to see what you can do this basically comes with a sticker pack for like labeling all your things and there's stuff on there that you would never think you could put through something like this. So it's really your imagination is the limit when it comes to the Red Vision system and how you want to play with it and tweak it. It's a lot of fun and I'm very happy to have Red Arc on board for you know the seasons going forward. It's an amazing partnership and they're an incredible company to work with and their products are just in a league of their own. So yeah, if you guys are keen on checking out the Redox system, I highly recommend going and checking out the YouTube channel and their website. They've got loads of little videos showing the installations, explaining the products in technical detail and things like that. I use all of those videos as my reference point for planning my own DIY installation on it. And locally, if you're looking at getting Redox products in South Africa, you can head to your nearest 4x4 Mega World or get in touch with them on Instagram or through their website and they can help you out with setting you up with a Redox system. We've done a lot more on this build. So let me swing around here and show you what's been going on. As you can see, packed and pretty much ready to go. We are leaving on a trip tomorrow. I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. But we have the new updated Bushtech draw system. Now, this is a big upgrade in comparison to the previous one. I've been running that draw system now for almost two years. It's done a lot of hard work for me and I've abused it and it's withstood everything. But the challenge Bushtech set themselves for this next iteration of the draw system was to be as light as possible but as strong as necessary for an overland lifestyle. That other draw system I can slam and slam and that thing will never break. But it was very heavy. It was over 90 kilograms. I think 98.5 is about what we weighed. This new draw system with the same configuration as the other draw system comes in at 71. So we are almost 30 kilos lighter than the other draw system. But we've got more functionality out of it now. So say for example, we open up here, the other draw system didn't lock out. So you were still fighting gravity. Now you see these nice new little red latches here, push up, push in, beautiful. Same on the fridge side, pull it out, locks out. It's fantastic. So that's really awesome. They also have a new fridge mounting system. So you can see here, there's no longer, I had a little red cord here, this. I'm gonna pick up the whole drawer with this thing. They've got a new system that actually drops into the drawer that you can secure. Specifically, I think at the moment, the National Lunar Fridge is on. That is super cool. They've also got a cutout here for the front-facing screen on the fridge. So I can just open up and I can see what my fridge is at. I can program it from here. It's just all these really nice additions. It's really, really nice. They've even gone as far as improving the fridge cage, there's now honeycomb on the inside of the fridge cage, there's tie down points all around the fridge cage, so that's going to give you better ventilation, but at the same time, you're going to be able to secure stuff. So now I've got my water can secured, I've got my little Weber secured there. Very impressed so far, very happy to get out there and really abuse it. For now, that's really awesome, I'm excited to have that all sorted out. I want to show you um, one more little thing that we've worked on and on the other side of the canopy. So let me shift the cameras around quick and let me show you that. So on this side, some of the changes I've made is, well, this entire cupboard has been changed. I have got, thanks to 4x4 Mega World, this beautiful little high output air compressor. I got to see this thing in action in Namibia on Rulfi's vehicle. And this little thing outperformed my massive cheapy air compressor like flawlessly every time i mean you've got your pressure switches so like if i switch it on the second it gets to you know it can cut off on its own things like that if it gets to pressure when you got it so you don't have to run around and keep switching off the air compressor so it doesn't blow up you know what i mean you can go and you can you know easily move around the vehicle whereas before i was constantly like running forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards from the air compressor to my indeflate while I'm pumping up my tires. It also takes up significantly less space. It's far more power efficient. 
and it is just one of those things that I think this is something I've been looking forward to doing for a while. And what that allowed us to do now is we can put in the shelf, we've got our gloves, we've got our snatch strap, we've got our hose, we've got a little, you know, little dust pan, we've got the indeflate in here, I've got my torque wrench in here, and I've got a traffic triangle. So I've, I've really managed to utilize the space. I won't lie, I took a lot of inspiration from Darren at Bush Tech with how he's got his cupboard set up and Rulfi with how he set his cupboard up as well. So I must say, very cool, very excited about that change. Now, last time we chatted about the Hilux, I'd showed you the storage system inside the back of the vehicle, but it's done now. So let me show you that and there is one last very, very cool thing inside the cab of the vehicle that I got just yesterday. And this is cutting edge stuff, so I can't wait to share that with you. There it is, all powder coated, carpeted, and pretty much done. I've got a little box in there that's been Velcroed down to the carpet underneath. And the Jackery's found its home there. I've got a plug here, so that whole inverter system and everything is there. It's charging from the vehicle when we're driving or it's charging from the Red Ox system when we're at camp. And I've got all my plugs and stuff that I need there. So that's really nice when it comes to, you know, working on my laptop, I'm busy, you know, downloading the footage and stuff from a day of filming or charging the camera batteries. This is a dedicated space in the vehicle to be able to work on my stuff. So that I'm very, very, very happy with. I've used it now already a couple of times and it has been great. So I'm really glad that's all sorted now. Things are going to slowly find their homes and all that stuff. But I've saved <laughs> something fun for last. It is this beautiful creature. This is the Garmin Tread XL Overland Edition. It is ginormous. It is a 10 inch screen. I've only just put it in the vehicle. I'm still going through it. I'm still seeing, you know, what all is actually going on on here. But I must say, if it is anything like the combination, like I think it is, it's got inReach built in. So you've got your satellite communication actually built into it as well. So you don't need to carry another dongle. It's pretty incredible. I've got my apps on here and the maps are very, very cool. I've gone ahead and I've put the Tracks for Africa maps on here as well. And oh, the, the, it just the combination is just absolutely amazing. So I must say I am absolutely thrilled at the moment. It is, it is big though. That's going to be something to get used to, but so easy on the eyes. The brightness is amazing. The, just the build quality is fantastic. They really know how to make good products. I'm very keen to kind of get a bit of experience on it, use it, see how it works. Does it kind of, you know, does it surpass the Overlander? The Overlander was the benchmark for me and uh, I'm kind of keen to see how this one performs, but I feel very positively about it. But I'm very stoked to kind of play around with that and see that now on the next trip, which we leave tomorrow. And it is quite an exciting trip at that. So um, let me tell you a little bit more about that and let me show you the vehicle that we're gonna be taking with us on that trip. Obviously, we're pretty much all packed up. There's a few last little things to do, but we are gonna be heading out on a really epic, epic trip. We're gonna be teaming up with Bush Tech. They have built an epic 79 series Land Cruiser V8 diesel with a tray set up on it, lifted suspension, bumpers, everything. It is a beautiful touring rig. And we're gonna be taking that rig to the Bavians Kloof. We're gonna be trying to find as many bush camps as we can in the Bavians Kloof. And we're gonna put it to the test and see how does a tray setup compare to our style? So let's say for, for the sake of it, for fun, Aussie style versus South African style. Now, most vehicles you're gonna see overlanding around Southern Africa are gonna have a canopy, an awning, and a rooftop tent, just like this. Have a little drawer system inside. Trays are not that popular here, but it is a trend that is picking up. And I think the influence of overlanding and four-wheel driving in Australia is really starting to impact the local South African market. So a lot of local companies are kind of coming up and starting to develop trays. 
Now, I've worked closely with Bushtech for a long time, so it would be very interesting to see what they've been working on, what they've been developing, and see, is this something that the South African market wants? Is this something that the South African market needs? And is it actually better than running a really high-end setup like mine? So it's going to be really fun to see. I've never driven a Land Cruiser before. I've obviously never used a tray before. I've only seen a tray a few times. So it's going to be a really fun experiment to see how do we pack it? What do you do with the space? What do you do with all the little cupboards and the drawers and all of the things on it? So Rolf is going to be coming through with the Land Cruiser soon. We're going to be having a look at it. Um, and, you know, maybe we pop through to Bush Tech. They can run us through how the Land Cruiser set up, talk us through the tray, some of the functionality and stuff of it, so we can wrap our minds around it, pack the vehicles, and head out for an amazing adventure and really put it to the test. So I hope you guys are gonna subscribe and you know, comment down below, let me know what you think of some of the changes, what do you think of the Redox system, the draw system, the little air compressor, um, the Garmin, holy cow, that thing is cool. Um, so yeah, let me, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe, to stay tuned, to see the upcoming trip. We've got some big things planned. After the Balviance Kloof trip, we're going to continue on for another 30 days overlanding to some of South Africa's top destinations. So this is a series you guys do not want to miss out on. There's some really fun stuff coming up over the next good couple of months. So hope to see you all out on the next adventure and I'll catch you then. Cheers.